and at 13 I decided that I wanted to become a marine biologist and write books that explain things so ordinary people like my dad could understand them and then work to make a difference. So I went to the East Coast and did schooling, 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 got my undergraduate, my master's, and then hopped to the West Coast, Seattle, got my doctorate, and it all was in oil pollution. And I hadn't planned that, but that's just the way it was. Finally, in 1985, I finished, and I didn't really have a plan. And I looked north, and I went, you know, I've always wanted to go to Alaska. So I thought, I'll just take a summer off. That was 1985, and what's a marine biologist supposed to do? I became crew on a salmon fishing boat out of Cordova, Alaska, and completely fell in love with the lifestyle, with the people, with the community, and decided that I'm staying. And the name of the game in town was commercial fishing. So the next year I bought a boat and a permit and actually began salmon drift gillnet fishing in the big wide ocean. And then four years later, we had the Exxon Valdez oil spill happen in our backyard, Prince William Sound, which is where we fish. It sits stranded like a giant wounded animal all through the morning, bleeding its cargo of North Slope crude at a rate of 20,000 barrels an hour. By this afternoon, the Exxon Valdez had leaked 265,000 barrels of oil into the waters of Prince William Sound. At more than 11 million gallons, it's the largest spill in the 10-year history of the pipeline system. People woke up with their beaches literally under three feet of oil. And it wasn't until 1992 and 1993 that our fisheries collapsed in Prince William Sound. In Cordova, half the people are directly engaged in the commercial fishing industry as commercial fishers. We did a blockade of Valdez Narrows to get the attention of the scientific community and the political community held up oil traffic for three days. That, in fact, did get everyone's attention. That was 25% of the U.S. domestic oil at the time. And what we were demanding was that scientists get their act together and explain to us what's wrong with Prince William Sound. That triggered two things. And each of those two things ultimately became subjects of books of mine. One was what did happen to Prince William Sound. And the scientific community determined after four ecosystem studies conducted over eight years that looking at multiple generations of mammals, birds, fish, looking at food chain interactions, that oil is much more toxic than we thought. We thought that the worst thing that could happen to us was the spill and killing the physical environment in Prince William Sound and killing off our fisheries. But we have learned since 1989 that really the worst thing that happened was tearing apart our community, the mental health effects on our community. And this wasn't just with the spill, it was with the cleanup effects, with the money coming into town, the very divisive atmosphere, but it was also with the litigation, which we are still at this point um, in 2007 right now, we are still appealing, litigating, fighting. This has been 18 years. And there can be no closure to an emotional trauma when there is this much upheaval still being generated. And what we have learned in Cordova then, we can actually help not only our nation, but also apply these lessons to the whole world. That's the message that I'm trying to bring out in Not One Drop. Cordova had become what the sociologists call a corrosive community. Polarized, intense fighting, it destroyed an ability to do collective decision making. Once we got over that hurdle, we slowly started pockets of healing in our community. So I would say that the healing in Cordova is pretty much a mirror of the healing in Prince William Sound. It's uneven, it's slow, but it is happening. I would like to see us as a global society transition off fossil fuels before I die. How did corporations get this big where their values count more than the values of ordinary people and ordinary communities? We've got to rebalance power and we've got to give power back to the people and make people's values count, community values count. And so I'd like to work on, on those two things and I figure that'll keep me busy for the next 30 years.